Hello, and welcome back to Inquisitor Martyr. Last time, we made a little more progress in the Void Crusade, and this time we'll keep going, but we're gonna mix it up a little. We're supposed to go this one, then this one for missions, but I'm actually going to deviate and go here. Actually, hang on. This is, yeah, because this is against Black Legion. Yeah, because that, please, this gives me plus 10% damage against Tyranids. This gives me reduced damage taken from Tyranids and Eldar. So if I get the bonus damage and then come in here to fight Tyranids, I'll get through it a little bit faster, because I have to take down a Wandering Servo Skull. This one, ah, oh, it's just Black Legion again, so it's not really relevant what I get. But I'd like this bonus from here on in, even though I'm only going to need it for one, maybe two... Two, maybe three fights. I have to correct myself, because we have this one... We have this one, and maybe this mission, I think I'll be taking this one, because that's 81, this one is 83. So I'd rather callous on, okay, so it's going to suck, but it's not going to suck as bad. So yeah, we'll knock this out, because this should be pretty quick, if we're being honest. Uh, I'm not going to put any tarot on it, I don't feel like monkeying with it too much. of the Imperium are infinite, and such a vast threat can only be fought with ingenuity. Kill the masters, and you will render a sea of vermin helpless. Man, I really hope me deciding to break from the map I have doesn't screw me over. <laughs> I'm waiting for it to do just that and turn out I had to do this certain order and me deviating doom the entire thing. If it does, well, you learn from me. And who knows, maybe I'll get real ambitious and restart the whole run off screen and run through it again. Probably not, because that's a lot to run through at this point. At that point, I'd rather just complete it and start over. But, if you've been following other 40k news lately, you would have saw Henry Cavill is working on a... He's producing and supposed to be starring in a 40k show. Or movie. It's supposed to be... I believe he was credited saying it would be like the start of a cinematic universe sort of deal. Which... I have mixed feelings on. On one hand, I do like Henry Cavill. I'm not entirely a fan of everybody being like, oh, he's our guy. He has a similar interest to us. That's all. I... I, I just don't like attributing kind of that tribalist view of like, oh, he's our guy, or he isn't. Because we don't know the guy. He seems pretty cool, but unless you can meet him in the flesh and talk to the guy you can't really say for certain. I am optimistic because he seems to care. That's why he left the Witcher project or the Witcher show because it seemed like the people in charge just did not care about lore continuity. And God knows as a complete nerd. I despise when continuity is ignored. Duty prevails. That was always my problem with Star Wars as of late is people abandoning continuity, especially because you see all the articles now where people are like, I don't like continuity. We, do, we should abandon it so that you can make whatever you want. I'm like, then well, why do you want to put this brand name on it? It reminds me of that Resident Evil show that came out on Netflix, you know, the one where Wesker is played by, oh god, Lance Reddick. Say what you will, Black Wesker or whatever, I think he's a good actor. The weird part is they even said the games up to five were all canon, so Wesker was white. And then it turns out 
Reddick is a clone, and just none of the writing made sense. And there's all the weird continuity issues with this show, and people are pulling the same thing of, oh, why do we need continuity? Because otherwise you don't have a show that sticks to the brand. You could, at that point, take a bum fights VHS tape and say, this is part of Star Trek because I said so. How does a bunch of homeless, potentially crack-addicted people apply to Star Trek? Ah, no, I, I don't care about continuity. Same concept. It's not good. It's not fun. Admittedly, I do remember watching bum fights. Those were wild. But regardless, it. I, I hope for the best. I'd like to see a good 40k show. I don't know where they're gonna start. Because if you pull a, well, just start from the beginning, we're doing Horace Heresy the show. Which would be interesting. I just feel as though there isn't actually as much as you'd think. Which I don't think is necessarily bad either. It would just kind of suck because you know 95% of the characters aren't coming back at that point. And you know whoever... I can pretty much guarantee whoever they'd pick to play Sanguinius, they're going to get a bunch of people. Like, it's going to be Tumblr fangirl level love for Sanguinius probably. Either by actual fangirls or by grown men who just really like the Blood Angels. And I think a big part when it comes to people playing the Primarchs is it is very difficult, I think, to find people who fit the look. Because they all have such distinct appearances that, yeah, you can, you can fudge them. They don't have to be one-to-one. -one. But you have to have very imposing people for certain characters. What I think of would be Horus. You have to have an imposing person for him, or Abaddon, Erebus. You have to have someone who's really imposing for almost anyone. God knows who they'd pick for the Emperor. If I was going to pick a spot for Henry Cavill, though, the spot I would like him to play, and I don't know if people would agree with me on this, I want him to be Cypher. Because of all the Dark Angels, because I get kind of tired of the Dark Angels, they... They're so ashamed of having people defect and get away that they've kind of become just dicks. And instead of just owning up and being like, look, we had some guys break off. We're kind of in the process of catching them. Help a homie out. They're like, no, we have to silence anyone who knows our secret. It's like, dude. Realistically, wouldn't the Inquisition start looking into some of these disappearances and go, hey, why can we usually trace Dark Angels to being deployed in these areas? Or you ask the Dark Angels, hey, where were you, where were you here? And them just being like, oh, no, we, we didn't have a ship there. Really? You're kind of lying through your teeth here. But Cypher would be an interesting character because... He's kind of everywhere. Cypher plays the anti-hero. He's worked with Chaos. He's worked against Chaos. He's helped the Imperium at times. He, if I remember correctly, when he went to Terra with Gilliman, he ended up 
seeing the Emperor in the Golden Throne. And is pretty much one of the few people to actually do that. Oh god, it's just what I talked about last time. The shadow cloning... Grenadiers. some void shards, I'll take it. The fight wasn't too terrible, and honestly, the void shards pay themselves out. But Cypher, I think, would be a good character. I could see people being like, oh, he should be Gilliman and lead the Ultramarines. I... I don't think he'd be a good fit for that. I could see maybe... Maybe a Lionel Johnson or a Rogel Dorn character. But Gilliman's a little... I don't know, I just can't see it. Maybe it's my own biases towards Ultramarines. If someone... If you were to play someone evil... That would be a challenge. Who... Who would he fit well as? I, I think this is kind of the curse when some actors, they just don't get typecast. As, or they don't get cast at all as bad guys that it becomes difficult to actually envision them as a bad guy. And of course, with chaos, it's the worst of the worst. He's not an Angron, he's not a Karn the Betrayer. I think he could pull off the rolls, but it's just, those are inherently very difficult roles. Because you need a... Like I said, you need a very specific kind of person. You can't have Michael Sarah being Karn. Yep. <laughs> I'm just stumped now for anybody. Because I'm just trying to imagine a good voice for these characters. Like, who would be a good voice for Typhus? Or Mortarian? Because the generic demons of chaos, you can... You could look at even... The Total War Warhammer games, those do a great job with all of them, with Nurglings and Great Unclean Ones. They all fit. But past that, it gets a little... Demons are the ones that are easy, because you don't need a face. It's all CG. I'd love to see Bellacor show up. That'd be fun. I guess the other way they could run the show is having it be current 41st millennium stuff or 42nd millennium. Because it's now in the 40 something 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 years.
but you could do almost a show running. It would, it, it'll come out. If they started today, they'd come out probably year and a half, two years from now, I'd guess. But. Because the Arcs of Omen stuff, I think, would be interesting, but I feel like you need to introduce Space Hulks. And honestly, a Space Hulk movie would go hard. Wow, I nearly died. In one friggin' grenade blast. That's real neato, my guy. Oh, thank God the mission ended already. I had contemplated going after him before finishing it. Whew, that would have been a mistake. And I got the thing here. Ooh. Fancy force staff. And yeah, I got a uh, passive point... Which we'll put here. Yeah, I don't know if that gives me bonus warp damage on top of my normal damage or if it's only warp. Either way, I'm not touching it. But let's check out that uh, staff. Bonus damage for AoE. Oh, that's better. I'm looking at this. Bonus loot quantity. It's better. Chance to shock on critical hit. Minus two. That's kind of surprising. I mean, it doesn't get... Okay, so there's... There's pluses and minuses to this. It doesn't have the weird vein attack. The weird vein attack hits hard. But... The critical hit bonuses, while I don't get a flat critical hit chance, I do gain some good stuff. The HP gain on critical hit is neither here nor there. I could realistically, if I want to, just roll that out. I might. But better loot quantity, always down for more loot. Bonus damage against shocked enemies, well, if 20% chance to shock on a critical hit... That's going to trigger, and that's just 25% more damage. 50% damage, that's 7% more damage on AoE Psychic Powers. So, for now, we're keeping that. That's that's a to-be-potentially-used-later item. Is that a... yeah, meme virus. I don't really need the meme virus. I will use the damage up, though. Now we can continue on as our normally scheduled pathing here. Maim the heretic. Slay the treacherous Xenos. Banish the fork tongue demon spawn. This 50% damage boost should do some good here. Already looking like it's doing some good. <laughs> As I stand tall over my enemies. But back to the Warhammer show. Still can't believe that's actually in the works. That is wild to me. But I think the stuff I saw said Amazon was the one that's backing it. Which, once again, just feeds into what I was saying back when we were talking about Warhammer Plus. Shows need to be on bigger streaming services than Warhammer Plus. You need to bring people in. And Games Workshop, they should be bending over backwards for this project because 
You got Henry Cavill, who is the poster boy of nerds right now. And he has done, I would say, immeasurable amounts of good PR for Warhammer. And he is producing a show. I can't think of many other times in life where people are given a golden opportunity like that. And hopefully it succeeds and shows people, hey, it turns out, if you have people who actually care about a project, they do a better job than people who don't care. Which admittedly, there is a double-edged sword element to it. Because when you look at, honestly, a lot of stuff, I look at Star Wars, for instance, you can have people who are really big fans, but they might get kind of bogged down in the details, the minutia. Get back your servo skull! Why are you so dang beefy? I don't know where it is. Oh, it's up. Wait. You have failed to eliminate the corrupted servo scum. No! Oh my god. I got swamped by just all the trash. See why I took that damage reduction though? Nah, that sucks. Oh well. I was just struggling to deal with him, so... So I won't get one chest, but as long as I get the all the intel, I'll be fine, because I'll know what chest to ignore. Just sucks. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, it's my gear. My gear was bad. I just think it was a bad run. And the thing is, this would have gone even worse if I didn't have the bonus damage. That's the other thing to keep in mind. Yes, I'm dealing with a damage penalty, but I'm also sitting on a damage up. So this would have just gone worse without it. And had I tried to use, honestly, anything, buy one of those, you get a space marine abilities from or a Rebus or something, it wouldn't have paid out. Because he would have got bogged down fighting every other little piddly ravener and termagant that got in the way. Oh well, lessons learned. I, I want to say what would help would be more gear with slots, and I could sit down and just put slots into a bunch of gear, but I'm still hesitant. One, credit cost. Two, it's just, it's a lot. I'd have to have stuff to put in them. I can only put so many of the AoE damage shards in my gear before that's all I have. Game, please. Is that Toxicrine healing? 
Are there regen towers nearby that I'm missing? I really hope there aren't regen towers because that would be annoying. Bunch of trap flamers. Need to kill the stupid zone throat. Trying to whittle down everything around the Toxicrin. Yeah, being able to shock on crit would be nice. Because shock, if I remember correctly, slows enemies a bit. And that's what I really need, because I can't outrun these guys very reliably. The Emperor protects. Okay. 40... Let's see, 36... A little over, like, 5,300 credits. Or, fifty, yeah, 5,300. Not the greatest. But once I level up a bit more, there's four more... 3% AoE damage boosts I can get, which will help a ton. Giving me, what, 12%? That's pretty solid. Yeah, it doesn't seem like much. If I deal, you know, 78 damage, I'm now dealing 85, but that's still a little over 10%, 12% damage total that I didn't have before that I'm now getting. And maybe that couple percent would have helped with the uh, Wandering Servo Skull. I don't know. I'd like to think it would. It th This does kind of feed into what I had said prior regarding these missions and when you're supposed to play them. Because it feels like you either need to have really good gear that you've found that lets you ball out of control and then you can just continually chain that or you have to have just something you need to be far better off than you actually are Because if you're trying to do these with subpar gear, you're going to suffer for it. You, I can make the argument my gear is somewhat subpar. Part of it, like I said last episode, is my build. I own that. If I was able to redo my morality, I would. Because I get, I think, off the perk, a 55% damage up while I have a shield. At least for heat damage. Well, I almost always have a shield up, and I can on will give myself a shield. So, there is an argument that can be made that, hey, I could be doing far better. But, just like last time, like I said, I also don't think the game should be that rigid in your build. That if you pick the wrong morality, you're doomed to worse stats if it's the difference between succeeding and failing in a void crusade I think that's absurd who's left oh don't know how I missed you but 
guess we'll make the long run back. I thought they were supposed to make a change. At this point, who knows if we even got the update. But I thought we were supposed to get a change where the enemy would actually pursue you and you'd get a speed up in missions like this. So that this wouldn't happen. At this point, I don't even know what our last update contained, because it seems like it contained nothing. We're still on Season 3. And don't forget that, we're still waiting. Wow. You gave them death generously. My compliments. Or no, the last mission was the damage up. This is the damage reduction. Yeah, so... It's useful. Kind of sucks because that's not really where we're hitting the proverbial and sometimes literal wall here. But we'll just keep going. It's Black Legion, so there's no bonuses for me. Multiple reality distortion waves near you, Inquisitor. The warp gates are active. I've activated the jealous shields to protect the sanity of my crew. I do wish I could get my build to the levels I saw with the I had with Diablo 3, where I was running like Torment 5 with my Witch Doctor. But I think that's because I swear the Witch Doctor was bugged. My summons would take no damage, so I could just freely run around. They would always aggro everything, and then I just hit everything from the back line and take no damage. So that might have just been the game being weird. I saw a thing for Diablo 4. There is a $100 collector's box that is just a box. And I'm not even surprised in the slightest at this point. They're also doing a battle pass. And, I guess, paid updates? Like, paid DLC, effectively? And I thought, okay, paid DLC I'm a little fine with, as long as they're of substantial value. If it's, oh, here's a region, give us $20, they better do, you know, a story and enemies and a lot with it. But the battle pass... Hmm... Battle Pass has become the current version of loot boxes. You know how we had loot boxes and everything that's partially what killed Killing Floor? Well, at least Killing Floor 2. Because they thought, oh, we can get CSGO money off loot boxes for a game that is far smaller and not competitive. God, I... It's weird looking back at a lot of these design choices and sitting down and going, someone in a professional setting looked at this and said, yeah, let's do that. They didn't for one second go, hey, Maybe we aren't guaranteed the amount of money this other game gets because it's a completely different genre and we're just a PvE wave-based shooter. Which is something I'm surprised they never changed with Killing Floor. As much as it is part of the DNA of the game, it also made the game just incredibly boring. Because it was just the same thing in a new location. Which... Really... At least to me, it wore itself thin. And I love Killing Floor. I, it, it's a game I remember getting the first one. It's a game that held a very special place in my heart for like online gaming. And... 
playing two, I was like, this somehow is less fun than one. I think a big part was they focused so much on just, like, dismemberment. And while it was cool, it was also completely moot. Stuff like, oh, there's all these different layers of destruction to a head and they can blow apart in different ways and I'm thinking, I don't really care. Even with the slow-mo mode, I'm still not spending enough time sitting down watching the carnage as much as I am just trying not to die. But I think that's just another classic instance of losing sight of the forest through the trees. You get so bogged down in the minutia that you forget what really matters in a game. And of course, there's the matter of everyone's different. What I prioritize in games is different from what you may prioritize. For instance, I love loot. That is, that's a reason why I love Borderlands, why I love games like this. I just love getting loot, sifting through, being like, oh, is this good? Is this good? I love crafting. In MMOs, I love community building. I was so excited when Fallout 76 was announced because I wanted to travel around and be an arms dealer. Of course, that completely fell through because of player trading, everybody just killing on sight initially until they essentially pretty much disabled PvP the fact that no one bought anything except legendaries so normal weapons had no value it was so easy to actually modify weapons that specializing in weapon modification is a waste there was a lot of problems that were never they existed and I felt like they shouldn't have existed but it's stuff like that that I always loved I wanted to do that I I remember pitching ideas of, like, a quest bounty board that players could generate quests for other players on the same server to do. You'd put an item or caps and they'd be kind of put into escrow, and upon completion of getting you certain items or whatever, you would get money. Or, like, the player could turn it at the board, they'd get the stuff. And if they had to bring items, they would do that. It would have been cool. But, that's not what we got. And of course, some people don't care about that stuff. And that's... That, unto itself, plays into another issue, which is... Games nowadays don't like developing core audiences. They have this very all-or-nothing approach of it needs to appeal to everyone or it doesn't work. And that's a problem. I mean, look at... Look at Fortnite. They try to appeal to everyone by having every IEP and every everything you can think of shoved into it. And at a certain point, it stops appealing to people. I remember seeing, I think I'd mentioned this, the game dev conference from a few years ago. And they had the guys working on God of War, and they were talking about who they make the games for, and they used a clip that they blurred of Dark Side Phil. Being like, oh, see, we, this is the kind of player we gear our stuff towards. You know, lowest common denominator someone who's playing with literally zero higher brain function. And the problem is you don't gain people through that. You'll gain initial buys, but how many of those people complete the game? How many people form a community? And in a game like God of War, you don't need a community. But in a game like Eve, if they had made Dust and made it the most brain-dead shooter imaginable, you wouldn't have had clans or corporations in that instance, and you wouldn't have had some of those people go to EVE and still be there to this day, waiting. But 
that is all for now. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit the like button. It helps out the channel a lot. And if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.